Hello, this video is going to show you how to do an item shop. So in this case, your champion or person will collect coins. Then they can go and select them. So right now I don't have a shield and I don't have any buttons to push. But if I pick up the wand, it will ask if I want to buy a wand. I can say yes or no. I'll say yes for now. And then now I have wand power and can shoot things. This one, if I touch it, I can buy a shield and it will add life to me. Okay, you can see my life change up here in the left. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this works too. So now if I don't collect enough coins and I go to the item shop, um, it will say you don't have enough coins. If I did correctly, I didn't do it right. Yep, you don't have enough. If I want to buy the shield and I say yes, it says you do not have enough coins. Same thing for the wand, since I don't have five coins, you do not have enough. And we can go back and try again. So um, this, if I leave here and go back, I can collect coins and then go back to the shop. Okay. All right. Here's how we build this. Okay. So before you start this, you do need to have a few things here built already. So you need to have um, your sprite here, obviously, a tile map. Um, you need to have some way to, some way to interact. What I've built is a house sprite. Um, some of you want to do like overlap a tile, but I found it be works best when you have a actual sprite they can talk to or touch. So this works good if you have like a non-playable character or even like a house. So this could be like a user they talk to or something. I place it. I also have spawning coins here. This here tells me that when I get a coin, I get changing score, okay? So the first thing I need to do is to set up a variable called coins. So I click on variables, and this is how we're going to check if I have enough money or not, okay? So I'm going to go make a variable, and we're going to call this um, coins. We'll set coins to zero in the beginning, okay? And every time my player touches a coin, we're going to add the coin by one. Okay. And you pause this here. Okay. So now this will set a variable that every time I collect a coin, even though it's showing my score up here, it's going to be adding a coin to like my inventory. I could use the score as our main variable. I do want to add just another set coin variable just so you're keeping track of it in case you have other ways of adding to your score. Um, or even you can just get rid of score as well. But this is a good way of using score to keep track of how many coins you have. Okay. Um, next step. Okay, next step is when we touch the, um, the house, we're going to need to have a new tile map happen. So we're going to go to sprites and set house to sprite kind of... We're going to add a new kind, call it a shop kind. And the player will change this to shop kind. And when they touch the shop kind, I want to uh, teleport them to the new tile map. Okay. I'm going to design the tile map off screen just so we can make this video shorter. Okay. So I set up our tile map here and drew it really quickly. So now when I overlap here, I'm going to be transported here. But you notice that I, these coins are still here. So we're actually going to make a function that gets rid of all of the extra stuff. And this is actually just a good function to have all the time. So functions are good ways of repeatedly doing something. So I'm going to call this level reset. As I go to different levels, I have to get rid of the previous um, enemies and coins and power-ups. So we're going to call this function level set. You can do put the call in here. Don't forget to do that. And we're going to go to sprites. And we're going to destroy a bunch of sprites. So we're going to destroy enemies if we have them. We're going to destroy uh, coins if we have them. And since I have um, this new shop, I have to destroy it as well. Okay, so we're going to destroy all these kinds. And as you add more kinds, we will add more kinds. You need to get rid of them as you go from level to level. Okay, so set tile map. And I'm also going to place my, um, my sprite somewhere on... The tile map, I'm going to start them right here. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. 
Then I need to make some sprites for them to overlap or to touch. So we're going to make this one like a, a wand here. OK, there's a cool purple wand. And then we're going to call it a wand sprite. And then we'll place it on the map somewhere. I'll place it right here in front of the guy, 7-4. OK, and let's test. So now when I go to the house, it will teleport me to new map. And then here's the wand sprite. So right now, I cannot interact with it at all. I'm going to have to turn on collision or um, overlap with it. So we're going to set wand sprite to kind of make a new kind, a wand kind. Okay. Now we're going to go to sprites and overlaps. On sprite kind of player overlaps kind of wand kind. Um, we want it to ask us a question. Do you want to buy this object? And then we want to check if it has um, enough coins. So to do the question and answer part, we need to click on extensions, scroll down, and we're clicking for clicking for arcade story. Arcade story will download here. Okay, so let's add a little text here. Show long text on the bottom. Do you want to buy? A wand for five coins. Okay. Then we're going to show choices. Click on story. Scroll down and show player choices. We can write yes or no. We go to logic. So after we uh, show player choices, we're going to do some logic here. If they say yes, we want something to happen. If we say no, we want something to happen. Click on logic here. Actually, we want story. Last plant answer equals. I'm going to duplicate this twice. Always copy and paste the words to the bottom here. Because if you just retype the word yes and you put an extra space at the end or you capitalize the Y, it's a totally different answer. It has to match exactly. Okay. So if yes, I wanted to check if the person has enough coins. So we're going to logic here, add another one of these logics. Uh, comparison, I want to check if coins equals or more than five. So we're going to click on variables, coins. So if the coins is not equal to, we want greater than or equal to. If the coins is greater than or equal to five, we wanted to give them the, the ability to have... Um, the coins there, OK? So we want to first take away the coins, right? So if they buy it, we want to take away from the inventory, minus 5, OK? Since our score is the same as our number of coins, we want to set score to whatever the coins are, OK? So this number will change up here, OK? We also want to destroy the wand sprite by because we don't want to rebuy the thing. So we're going to click this, destroy sprite. We want to destroy the wand sprite. OK. We're also going to make a new variable. So once they pick up this thing, we want them to be able to turn off and on or turn on the ability to shoot. So we're going to make a new variable. Make a variable. We're going to call this uh, um, has wand. Has Wand. Okay. And we're going to set hands has wand to true. Okay. Um, and that's all the effects because once I turn this on, then I can shoot. Okay. So let's test if this works. We're going to go, we're going to make a unbutton pressed. Okay. Logic if true. Um, so right now, let's do this real quick. Uh, we'll do some projectiles. So set projectile. Um, I'll make a little pink fireball here. Change numbers here. So right now, the person does not have the wand, so I don't want them to shoot. 
And if I test the game here, they can shoot before they have the wand. I don't want that to happen. I only want them to shoot if they have the wand. So to fix that, we're going to make, since we you know, they have to buy the wand first, this set wand to true, this tells the computer that you have an inventory you're allowed to shoot. So we're going to set that up here. Click on logic, if true, put that in here. Click on variables, if um, has wand is true, we'll put it in there, then they can shoot. So right now, I can't shoot because I don't, I don't have the wand yet. I can collect five coins, go to here, touch the wand. Do you want to buy the wand for five coins? I say yes. Now I can shoot. Yeah. Um, we also, let's see here. We also need to put a delay on this because if we say no, we'll get stuck. So let me show you what happens if we do without putting a delay. If I say no, I could get stuck on this. See how it keeps asking the same over and over again? So I want to ask, get a, put a delay here to pause for like a second. So I have time for my player to walk away before they ask the next thing. Okay? So that's basically it. If you want to add more, okay, you obviously need to make more different sprites of different kinds. Okay? You'll duplicate this. So let's say I want to make another one that has like has sword and is a different type of attack, right? I would change this to a sword kind. Okay. I would draw a cool sword here, whatever. Okay. Change this to sword kind and then change everything that makes sense, right? So do you want to buy the sword? Sword? I keep saying sword like a Emphasis on the W for some reason. Okay, that's fine. We want to destroy the sword kind, the sword sprite. Did I make it yet? I think it's still called something else. It's still called my sprite too. I would change that to sword sprite. So make sure you change this to whatever sprite you make. This in this case it's called that. Set has wand true. I'd make a new variable. Call that has sword. And then whatever else, you know, if they have the sword, something else would happen. If they have the sword, maybe it shoots a different type of projectile. It does something else. Okay. All right. That's all it is for this one.